Rockers and Recovery Media is dedicated to carrying the message of addiction recovery through music, news, events, and festivals taking place within and not limited to the clean and sober community. John Hollis with Rockers and Recovery. If you don't know what Rockers and Recovery is, I'll tell you. We are a media company. We're dedicated to addiction recovery through music, news, interviews, events, and festivals taking place within, a clean, within the clean and sober community and not limited to the clean and sober community. Uh, RAR events and concerts and festivals. We have a magazine. And we do uh, talk radio, live streaming. You can check everything out at rockersandrecovery.com. Click on, uh, you know, of course, the about page to uh, partnerships, to media partners, to radio. Everything's there. You can also download the Rockers and Recovery apps at the App Store and, of course, uh, Google Play, so you can check that out. Tonight we have uh, some cool guests. First of all, <clears throat> I want to uh, let everybody know that uh, you know we had a, a little bit of a loss um, in the fact that over the years we have really, really, you know, worked diligently to carry a message of hope, and we're doing you know a show up in uh, up in Nashville, Tennessee, and that is going to be. Uh, of course, uh, uh, in um, uh, January 27th, and it's going to be at the uh, Hard Rock Cafe in Nashville, Tennessee. And I call it a little bit of loss because we normally do three or four or five events a year, and we're going to be down to just doing one um, per year. And this is our anniversary. It's a 10-year anniversary party, and it's being held at the Hard Rock uh, Cafe in Nashville. One of the sponsors of that event and who has sponsored many events of ours over the years is Lyle from the Shores Treatment and Recovery. And the Shores uh, is located in Port St. Lucie, but uh, they do great work and they've been around for many, many years. Um, Lyle has worked with uh, many people over the years to uh, help them to find a new way of life and uh, to have some hope. And while uh, over the years has not only uh, you know been a sponsor and somebody that I do business with, but he's become a friend. And uh, we welcome Lyle to the show. Thank you, Lyle, for being on Rockers and Recovery Radio. Yeah, thanks. Good to be with you again. So, you know, a couple of things. First of all, I wanted to touch base on a, uh, on something that I think is important. People understanding the concept of neurofeedback or even music therapy, and because I, I I had been reading some stuff on that today, and I, I wanted to just get your opinion on the you know the neurofeedback, and then go into some music therapy. Sure. Well, neurofeedback, and there's there's several forms of it. So you've got some of the more popular systems out there, known as the the Lens system or the Neurooptimal. There's a Neureka, and they all work a little differently, but the, the concept of neurofeedback as a whole is what they call operant brain conditioning. And, it's in, and other people call it brain training. Uh, then you've got brain paint systems, and they're, they're all very similar in the neurofeedback. So what essentially happens is you have EEG leads that are reading your brain activity, um, mostly focusing on the theta and beta waves, and then trying to based on that information, put new signals into your, you know, either your auditory or visual or both, it will help train your brain to go to a healthier state. So it's one of its highest efficacies, its best use is with ADD and ADHD, which is uh, intricately tied to addiction. There's a lot of comorbidity and, and a lot of crossover indi- indications that people with ADD and ADHD are more prone to uh, compulsive behaviors and addiction. So if we can solve that issue, uh, we can also help with the addiction issue. So since it is so effective in that, what happens is if your brain goes to an inattentive state where it's, it's in the ADD, ADHD mode, these signals can help redirect your brain to a more focused state. And then so your brain then maybe drifts back to the inattentive state and the signals are there to direct you back to the more attentive state. And through repetition, uh, it, it trains your brain, that if it should fall into that ADD, ADHD mode, to automatically kick back over 
to a healthier state of mind, so to speak. So uh, that's operant brain conditioning, much like, you know, you, you, a lot of people heard of Pavlov's dog. So the bell would ring at the same time food was delivered, and the, and the dog began to associate the bell with the food and would salivate at the bell even in the absence of the food. So in this sense, your brain is being trained that attention should come at, in the place of inattention. And so, hmm. and therefore, brain training. There's other systems like the Nureka one, and that what that does is it allows the client to practice better moods and thoughts. So there's an image on the screen, and if you think happy thoughts, it reads those brain waves and will change the image on the screen based on your mood and mode. So that way you can see the effect that you actually have control over your brain, and it teaches you to practice healthier thinking. Uh, then the you know there's other again there's there's several varieties and, and variations on this, but that's the essentials of feedback. So when you actually so you're actually retraining your thinking and your brain waves to go in another direction is what basically it's coming down to. Correct, and some systems are more uh, direct than that. Some are very subliminal, and you don't even realize what's happening. You sit through a session, and you can re- look at the charts, and you see the graphs of your brain waves have settled into a healthier pattern. Uh, and then mm-hmm. over time, with repetition, uh, it becomes the norm, the new, the, the healthier norm. So again, it's so, used Paul- for other things as well: depression and anxiety, uh, mm-hmm. insomnia, or some things that it's used for as well. But its highest efficacy is with the ADD, ADHD. It was actually very successful in early trials in the 70s for um, seizures with uh, epilepsy. Wow. So when you couple this with therapy in a in a setting like yours where you're working with clients, and it, it all combines together is, uh, you know, and, and of course that's helping the person to do in the end with the therapy, what would you say? Well, sure, absolutely. So uh, imagine that you're, uh, and I was, you know, I'm an ADD kind of guy, so imagine that you're trying to help me through cognitive behavioral therapies, but while you're talking to me, my mind is wandering all over the map and not paying attention to you, and I'm having difficulty sitting still for 45 minutes to an hour in a room with you. Uh, You know, how effective is that cognitive behavioral therapy going to be? Whereas if I have the ability to uh, eliminate the ADD, ADHD component and pay attention to what's going on and be in a more focused state, certainly anything that I'm being exposed to is likely to be more effective. Mm. So Plus the comorbidity at the issue, end of the, the, the idea that, that, that uh, ADD and ADHD will drive someone to self-medicate, uh, mm. and that's where you see, particularly with a lot of the amphetamines and cocaine, things that, that work really well on that same component. It's typically related to a catecholamine deficiency, uh, which is the neurotransmitter that's, that's affected with, with uh, stimulants. And well, with that kind of brings up, uh, well, that kind of brings up another question, too, because, you know, you have amino acids and there's other things that you, mm-hmm. can, you can actually do to help repair that a lot. Because my understanding is, and I could be wrong, um, but it usually on its own takes a couple of years for the receptors to repair themselves, but you can speed that process up, correct? Absolutely. So, yeah, you have a variety of receptors. The big four are the catecholamines we mentioned already, uh, serotonin, uh, GABA, and most important is dopamine. So most people, uh, the majority of people who have uh, compulsive behavior issues, addiction issues, alcoholism, suffer from what we call reward deficiency syndrome, and that is a genetic predisposition toward addiction and compulsive behaviors because of a dopaminergic deficiency. So your dopamine system is not functioning uh, at prime. You're not getting enough dopamine, either lack of receptors or lack of dopamine production. So by feeding you the right uh, amino acids, which are the building blocks for all neurotransmitters, we can balance out your brain and get what we call uh, homeostasis, particularly dopaminergic homeostasis, so that you have the right amount of dopamine. Too much is a problem as well. Too much of anything is a problem. Not enough of anything is a problem. So too much Mm -hmm. dopamine is uh, where you get schizophrenia. Uh, So we obviously don't want to do that. So getting the right amount of the right building blocks, those amino acids that your brain may be deficient in, uh, will help it balance to a better thing. You see with serotonin all the time, people hear about SSRIs and you can actually take 5-hydroxytryptophan, which is 5-HTP, um, 
and L-tryptophan. Both of those help produce more serotonin. L-tryptophan also helps produce melatonin. So those that have sleep issues, uh, that can be extremely useful there as well. And again, all of it ties in. There's something called the reward cascade where all these work together. So as you affect one neurotransmitter, you affect another and so forth. And the end of that cascade, that waterfall, if you will, the, the, the important thing at the end is that dopamine, particularly for uh, people with uh, addictions and reward deficiency syndrome, which, again, results in compulsive behaviors. So if you bring this to the next step, which is if you're finding these things out, you're, you're going through the process and you're starting to find out if a person is lacking in any of those areas, it also brings up the medication question because a lot of per, you know a lot of people that happen to be on medication sometimes don't need to be on them, and now there are people that definitely need to be on medication, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But at the same time, yeah. some people might not be, and this is a way to be able to filter that out and start to see if they do or they don't. Well, it, and it's always tricky if someone's already on medications, you know, removing them from it, and it can be, you know problematic as well. And you're right. There are some people that there's no amount of um, aminos that we're going to be able to balance them and it's not going to address depending on what their issues are. But the, but a large majority of folks can be helped from it. Uh, and you're right. You're going to need that neuroplasticity, that healing process either way. Well, we've introduced um, other substances, artificial substances. When we bring in alcohol and opiates, cocaine, methamphetamine, you name a drug of abuse, there's a natural version of that uh, it only works because there's a natural version in your brain already. Otherwise, there'd be no receptors for it to bind to. So what you do when you introduce the artificial version is you disrupt that natural system. So given, let's you use the opiate epidemic that's so uh, in the news today, and that hits those receptors, well, guess what? Um, the, the natural version that your body would be releasing, those natural pain relievers that your body produces, begin to cease production. They stop happening. You disrupt that system. Because the artificial version is so powerful, your brain is fairly adaptive and says, there's no need for for me to produce this. You got it more than covered. So you disrupt that system. And that that healing process, as you said, can take, depending on how much of what you've used and how long you've used it, as well as some genetics and epigenetics, you you, you could be up to two years. And some people actually who have long-term crack cocaine or um, methamphetamine use may even end up with a system that never completely heals, and they get what you call anhedonia. And that's due to the lack of dopamine reaction. You have a general sense, lack of sense of joy. So anhedonia is an inability to feel joy. Um, Now, that's rare, and it is extreme cases. But, yes, so by adding the amino acids, we can speed up that healing process. We can train the brain to get back into production mode of those neurotransmitters that have been disrupted by the use. And it all reduces cravings. It it reduces withdrawal symptoms. It helps with focus. It helps with general mood. It can reduce depression, anxiety. It can even help with bipolar and a variety of other things. And there's a lot of, and you do that through nutrition as well as nutraceuticals. I was just going to, I was going to bring that up, the nutritional end of it. Um, But you know, something I, I want to, I want to let everybody know that, you know, of course, we're going to continue talking about all of this stuff. Um, we have Lyle and the Shores uh, has been gracious enough to be a media partner of Rockers and Recovery, and what that means is that through them we get to be able to host, you know, different people on our websites and give out educational information through, you know, musicians and all kinds of other uh, avenues that we post and blog about and talk about and it's guys like Lyle and the Shores that help us to maintain that on a yearly basis. So over the next year we're going to be doing eight shows over the next year and we're going to be able to talk about all of this stuff. So I, you know, continue to ask everybody to look for of course our information coming out about everything that we talk about, but most importantly when we're talking to Lyle, you're going to have discussions like this where you start to the process, and it helps me to understand the process because you know something, guys like Lyle are the ones that educate us. Lyle, you know, it's a great show. I want to thank you for being on, and thank you for uh, supporting Rockers and Recovery for 2018. My pleasure. Thanks for, thanks for taking the time.
You bet, man. And you know something? Uh, love to Darlin and everybody at the Shores, and I look forward to seeing you at the 10-year anniversary party up at the Hard Rock in Nashville. Definitely looking forward to it. We'll see you there. All right, Lyle, thank you. Okay. okay. Guys, tune in next episode. We're going to be talking about some dual diagnosis treatment, nutrition, and physical wellness, life management training, uh, all kinds of great therapies and different things that Lyle's involved with. And, of course, uh, tonight uh, we also have a musical guest, and Logan Bruce. Logan Bruce uh, met him several months ago. I was probably four months ago. And I met him through a good friend of ours, Stephanie. And Logan uh, gave me a CD, and I played it on the way back to Tallahassee from West Palm Beach. And it was an amazing, amazing uh, trip and some great music. And uh, Logan, how you doing tonight? Hey, how's it going, John? Good, brother. So... Logan's a singer and a songwriter, and he does some great music. You can check him out at uh, Sobriety Music on Facebook. And uh, starting in January, he's going to be doing a a show uh, over at the Rockers and Recovery Facebook page, too. It'll be streaming live on Sunday nights at 7 o'clock. So one of the things I wanted to do tonight, Logan, is is talk to you about your, your life before you got to the recovery aspect of it. And I understand that um, you had an opiate addiction and that, uh, you know, was raging. And you got clean when? Um, I got clean October 11th of 2016, so a little over a year ago. Okay. And since you got clean and playing your music, um, and being a singer and singer songwriter in recovery, has it helped you to dig in and to really start to, you know, work with your emotions and feelings? Did did music therapy kind of help that out? Yeah, um, actually, that was really like the reason how I started doing it was I don't don't remember when I first got sent to treatment um, five or six years ago. And they let me bring my guitar. And by then, or at that point, I was still too scared to play for anybody. So it was I was in my room most of the time, and I was just writing down constant thoughts that I had. Um, and actually just playing for myself, not for anybody else. And it turned into an entire book of songs in like 30 days. Like there's probably like 40 songs that I got out of one treatment stay. Um, wow. So, I mean, I guess it's just, yeah, I mean, at first... It really just helps as like an outlet, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, something to positive or negative. Like you've heard some of my songs. Not all of them are the most positive things in the world. Um, but as soon as if it's a negative song, then I get that out on paper. And it's almost like I just talk it out with somebody. Well, it's an amazing so. process because I see how how a lot of musicians, what they put down on uh, paper and how they take their life experiences day to day may be, you know, the recovery process or just what they're going through on a daily basis helps them to uh, deal with what they're dealing with each day. Do you find that to be true? Yeah, definitely. Where where do you see you going, you know, with your music? What do you want to do with your music? Um, that's a good question. I guess... I would like to, it's starting actually to take shape now, even with, um, like with the sobriety music and eventually like the rockers and recovery coming up. Um, I guess at first I would like to be kind of like a beacon or not a beacon of hope. I guess if that's what you want to call it, that's a good metaphor for it or analogy. Um, just like a way that anybody could look at me and see like you can, like somebody that, made it out of their addiction or alcoholism, whatever it is, and is doing something that they love. Um, eventually, I would like to kind of like be the gap, like bridge the gap between people that are addicts and people that aren't addicts. 
because we all know about the stigma there and everything with that. Um, and I don't know, eventually I would like to kind of bring the two groups of people together. Not that there's just strictly two groups of people in the world, but you know what I mean? Like people that might not understand what we deal with as addicts and kind of just like maybe help my, my music help bridge that gap between people that might not understand what we deal with. So not strictly like just a recovering musician, but maybe just like life, like just life in general. You know, like I'm more healthier and more uh, clean thinking type of uh, lifestyle that you're able to share with other people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <clears throat> with uh, that being said, uh, you have a great opportunity to be able to share your music and help help others and um, I want to thank you for being a part of Rockers in Recovery and sharing that CD with me because and, and, you know if you hadn't done that if I would have never you know found out who you are and that's that's how we're able to to work together and to be able to put your music out there you know um, it's it's all about getting the message in front of people and yeah. I love to do that I love to do that through music, and I got to tell you, I, you know, I love music. I've been a music lover since I was a kid, sitting in the bass drum of my brother's uh, bass drum, um, you know, to yeah. current. And it's guys like you and other folks that excite me, and 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 I hear what you're doing, and it definitely touches me. So, and I'm sure it's touching others. If you want, you can check out. Of course, Logan Bruce Music, and you just put in uh, the search in Facebook. You can do at Logan Bruce Music, and it comes right up. Click on the page, and yeah. uh, you'll be there. And he's got some great stuff, and he's putting out uh, some great videos. One of them just uh, went viral and hit around 21,000. So check it out, man. He's a great guy, and uh, we want to thank you for being a part of Rockers and Recovery. And most importantly, uh, you know, helping us to uh, uh, have a, a a good session every time we sit down and listen to you with some fun and uh, most importantly, uh, you know, some some laughs sometimes and and some yeah. great music. So right, I want to thank John. you. I appreciate it. Yeah, man, we look forward to having you back on. We're going to be talking about Nashville coming up. Uh, we'll find out if you're going to be able to be at the ten year anniversary up there at the Hard Rock. We'll find out more. We'll make some announcements about that, but uh, you can check out rockersandrecovery.com and everything is there. Just uh, click on everything. We'll have a great uh, night, and Logan, thank you for being a part of Rockers and Recovery. All right. Thanks, John. Have a good night. You bet. All right, guys. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and being a part of tonight's show and uh, the infamous words of Mike Zito, who is a uh, blues man in recovery, you're going to keep coming back. I hope you're going to keep coming back one day at a time. I'll keep coming back. Here you go, Mike Zito. Keep coming back.
up above, keep coming back. Rockers and Recovery Radio is based on opinion only and is not meant to treat or diagnose any health or mental health issue of any kind. If you feel you need help for any health-related issues, please contact a physician or mental health professional. The opinions expressed by our guests are not necessarily those of Rockers and Recovery. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. When you download the Baker's app, you have easy access to savings every day. Get the most out of weekly sales and receive personalized coupons to save on your favorite items, all while earning one fuel point for every dollar spent. Baker's makes it easy to save while you shop, whether it's in-store or online, so you get the most value out of every trip, every time. Download the Baker's app now to save big on your next purchase. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Must have a digital account to redeem offers. Restrictions may apply. See site for details.